and this is the point I've reached so far. I've got, um, I've had a bit of a rearrangement of the uh, chips on here. So I've put the, the Z80 here, um, <clears throat> put the EEPROM at the top corner here, and the RAM is over here. So I've got ROM, RAM, Z80. This is going to be, or in fact already is, partially my decoder logic. Um, the Arduino is going to sit over here, and I've stolen the clock off of my my prototype version, which is a 555 timer there to do the clock, but I've not got that wired up yet. So what have I got wired up? Well, the 16 address lines of the Z80 go to the EEPROM. Well, in fact, it's only 15 because the EEPROM is 32K EEPROM. So that's 15 address lines, a 0 to 14 uh, in yellow, and the data lines, um, D0 to D7 in these gray, wires are going to the EEPROM and on the brown wires they're going to the Arduino so I've got data linked up and also I've, got, I've collected the power and ground for most of these things I think and I'm keeping the Arduino power separate from the power for the rest of the circuit so I'm going to put in 5 volts for the Z80 and the RAM etc um, and have the Arduino powered by its own USB. I'll connect the grounds together, but I'm not going to connect the power together. So the Arduino will be powered by USB, the rest will be powered by a separate power supply. So I don't want to confuse the uh, poor old Arduino and make it have to power the whole lot. So that is the circuit as I've got it wired up so far. Just a few more bits and pieces, and I should be able to get the program loaded up into the EEPROM and running, so that will be 32k of EEPROM there in the bottom half of the address space. Okay, so this is where I'm up to so far, and it's uh, I was trying to keep it neat, but it's all got messy, but there's a reason for that because I was having a little bit of trouble. So I've now got the EEPROM in place with a very simple program that just prints a message. Um, just a little test message. Uh, the RAM isn't connected up yet. The Z80 is connected to the EEPROM with, uh, by the address lines. So should be 16 address lines, but the EEPROM's only 32K, so there's only 15 address lines connected up there. The spare one is just down here. Uh, then you've got the data lines between the EEPROM and the Z80, and the data lines between the Z80 and my Arduino. The Arduino is running a very simple program that just takes whatever character is sent to it from the Z80 via uh, an out command on the Z80 to, so to send a message to a peripheral. So the Arduino is the only peripheral that the Z80 knows about. I've got a tiny bit of decoding logic um, in this, uh, what's that, 74HCT32. So it's a set of OR gates, four OR gates there. Um, which I'll talk about at another time because that's just a little bit of decoding. I've got an LED down here just so I can see my M1 um, output from the Z80. M1's quite interesting when you're debugging um, because M1 means the start of a new instruction. So the M1 light will go out at the start of every new instruction. And I made two clocks down the bottom here from two different 555 timers. Um, and one of them is on a push button, so you can um, send one individual clock pulse at a time, and the other one is running at, let's have a look, the other, have we got power on? Power's on, yep, so the other one is running at, uh, how can I get this in shot? The other one is running, there we go, it's currently running at 300 kilohertz, so that's, um, so that's 300 kilohertz, isn't it? <laughs> About a third of a megahertz. Um, and so I can take out these, these two wires are here just to check the frequency. So I'll take those out. So I've got five volts coming in at the side here. I've got the Arduino connected up to my computer. So uh, the clock is currently coming out with a free running oscillator here into Actually, I'm just putting it through a sort of a knot gate that I've built by connecting two inputs of the OR gate together here. Is that a knot gate? 
Oh, it's not, is it? It's just working as a, a gate. Anyway, the reason I've done that is just to try and make sure my square wave is as square as possible. I'm not sure that that's particularly necessary. Then that goes into the clock pin here of the Z80. So if I put um, the, uh, if we just look at the serial monitor from the, um, from the Z80, uh, sorry, serial monitor from the Arduino, and I've just put a little uh, test message. That's actually come from the Arduino itself just to show that it's working. And I've currently got the Z80 reset by this reset line. So the reset line is currently low. Um, if I pull it out, plock it in there, we should get that my test message. So the Z80 is producing that by running a program in the ROM. And it's just the same message over and over again sent to the screen. Yes, yeah, so I've got um, a very simple program running in the Z80, which I'll show you on the screen here. Um, all it's doing is uh, I've got a test message um, with a couple of pangrams in there uh, just to check that all the characters print out okay and the, the, um, the program just simply starts at memory location zero because that's where Z80 programs always, well that's where the Z80 always likes to start its program uh, and it has an HL, the HL register pointing to my test message and it just works its way through each of the characters in the test message, sending them to the out port. And within the loop, it checks if there's a zero. So I've done a zero terminated string. If it finds a zero termination, we're done. If, we, if, um, uh, if it's not a zero, then it sends it to the port. So I've, what I've done is I've set a, a constant for port, which is the value whatever arbitrary value that I decide the port should be, the port address. Um, and we do an out command, out, which sends the contents of the uh, accumulator to that port. Now, the thing is, in this setup that I've got, I've only got one peripheral. And in the Z80 world, all peripherals have a different number. It's an 8-bit number. So a peripheral has a, a number like 0 or 37 or 129 or 255 or whatever. But if you've only got one peripheral, um, it doesn't really matter which number you use. So I haven't in any way decoded the peripheral address. So whatever you send an out on, so you could do out 52 and it would go to my Arduino from the Z80. Or you could tell the Z80 to do an out 123 and it would send the, um, the value of the accumulator to the Arduino. Because in the Z80 world, um, memory and uh, peripherals are in two completely different address spaces. But there's no need whatsoever to decode the address space if you've only got one peripheral. Now, if I added another peripheral, um, I would have to do some sort of decoding. Because at the time that we do an out command from the Z80, so I've got port set to, I think, 1 or something. So when we do an out 1, comma A, uh, it puts um, A on the data bus, it puts the number 1 on the address bus, and it takes the IO request line low to indicate that it's an out. Um, so if you were doing out 2, comma A, it would put 2 on the address bus. So if we had two different peripherals, numbered 1 and 2, we'd have to decode those peripherals somehow and listen to the address lines to see where... Um, where which peripheral the Z80 was trying to talk to. But as I've only got one peripheral, there's no need for that. So it's a very simple program. So what I'm doing then, looping around my message, sending the values, um, so it sends a T, then an H, then an I, then an S, out to the uh, port. And then it goes into a little loop, my test message done. Loop, um, loops around uh, 50 times, 255 times, however many that is. Uh, just to just to give it a little bit of a pause and then it goes back to the beginning and prints the message again. So let's see, is the message running? No, it's not. Um, there we go. So the um, the test message is coming from the Z80. Each character is being sent to the Arduino one at a time and then they're being flushed from the Arduino via USB, um, serial over USB at uh, 38 400 board through to the screen. So 
So you see that all the text comes out really quickly. And then there's a little pause, that 50 times 255 instruction pause. 